Hello and welcome to eNastava. This is English class for the fourth year of high school and the topic is young entrepreneurs. My name is Stephanie Kate Lukac and I'll be your teacher for the day. You're going to analyze your personal strengths and weaknesses. You will also examine the work ethic of a young Croatian entrepreneur and you're going to write a discursive essay. For today's class, you're going to need your notebooks, a pen or a pencil, and a device with the internet connection. To begin with, some of you might not have heard of the term entrepreneur. As you can see here, the actual definitions from these dictionaries involve the following key words. Manage, organize, risk, business, and money. But is there more to this than meets the eye? When you think about it, nobody can just jump in without thinking about what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and so on. There is a certain type of person who is more capable of owning their own business than others, isn't there? For starters, these skills are the first ones people think about when they think of entrepreneurs. Business management, customer service, finances, and marketing. They are more prominent, definitely. However, there's more to it than that. Entrepreneurs also have to be excellent leaders with top-notch communication skills, or what we call people skills. As you can see, many of these qualities revolve around thinking or thought processes, analysis, problem solving, critical thinking, strategics, or planning. That makes sense, of course. In addition to this, you cannot be an employee, let alone entrepreneur, without technical or digital skills. It's basically impossible in the modern world. Managing your time and being organized is obviously another major component of entrepreneurship. Keep these skills and abilities in mind for the following assignment. I'd like you to think about two of your strengths and two of your weaknesses from the list you saw in the previous slide. If you have more in mind, pare it down to two of the most prominent ones. Once you've chosen them, answer the questions. How have your strengths helped you in everyday life? How can you improve upon your weaknesses or turn them into a strength? Be sure to take some notes to help you record a short talk of two to three minutes. It'll make things a lot easier for you rather than talking about whatever comes to mind off the top of your head. Send your recording to your teacher. Please pause the video now in order for you to do the assignment. I hope that activity wasn't too difficult for you. Now, when you first heard and read the topic for today's lesson, I'm sure there's one person who popped right into your head. Mate Rimac. You can't not think about him when you think of a young entrepreneur who has followed his dream and become successful. Here you will see Rimac talking about his hectic workday, his crazy schedule, and his work ethic. In short, he's a workaholic. Please take notes regarding these bullets on the side based on what you see and hear Mate say. Pause the video before Mate's video comes up so you can take notes. Okay, next question. Okay, next question. Could you make an episode on your personal work ethic? Well, I'm not sure if I do things right or wrong. I think I do many things wrong, so take it with a grain of salt. I'll just say how it is. So, usually my day starts, uh, like the official day starts at 8 in the morning, meaning the first meetings. And meetings are all the way until 7 or 8, sometimes 9 or sometimes even 10 o'clock in the night. Uh, without stop. So, back to back. And everything is in the calendar. So for me, if during the workday something is not in the calendar, it doesn't exist. So calendar is super important. And some people might ask, why the hell do you so have so many meetings? And if somebody told me seven or eight or ten years ago that my life would look like that, I would also say, that sounds like a big company thing and like, wh why would you do that? Why is that necessary? But um, so one of the things, you know, you have big projects like, let's say, the C2 and projects like that. So you have, let's say, weekly meetings where everybody who is important for the project comes together and we make some decisions and uh, update each other and so on. 
So a big chunk of time goes on that. Then I have 14 direct reports. So people who are reporting directly to me, for example, Adriano Mudri, our head of design and uh, uh, Mattia Grazin, who is our head of component R&D, Tim Richardson, who is our chief operations officer. So those guys report to me. And of course I have to have one-on-one -on -one meetings with them as well. So every week or every two weeks, I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with each of them separately. That takes some time and then of course discussions with our investors, with uh, partners, customers and so on. And some, you know, stuff that pops up, some random things that are uh, important for that week. week. So uh, most of the time there is absolutely no space within a week. And if I want to get something done like emails and stuff like that, I have to start before. So usually I start working at six, which is very hard, like I was not born like that. When the company started, I would maybe sleep in a little bit longer and come to work at 9 or maybe even at 10. But now I can't imagine starting my workday after 6 or 7 because that means my whole day is ruined because I didn't catch up with the emails that arrived during the night. So I know when I wake up that I already have like 30, 40 emails waiting for me and that's a huge pressure. So emails are a huge problem because on one side I have meetings 10 to 14 hours a day and then I get 100 to 200 emails a day. So during the day, I managed to solve like 80% of the emails I get, but the 20% uh, that are more difficult and take more time, they pile up. And then I solve them during the weekend or when nobody else is working. So my secret weapon is to work when nobody else does. So it, it's like uh, the time stops, nobody else uh, sends you new, new stuff, and that's when you can get things done. So that's why actually this situation is not too bad for me uh, personally, like for personal work. Um, another thing which I'm very passionate about and which I, to be honest, didn't really do in the proper way if I think back, like I always thought when I'm going to build a company that I'm going to build it really with the right foundations, to totally digitalize it, have everything like very well structured, all the information exactly in the right place and so on. But then, <laughs> you know, you get hit with reality and you have to take care about other more important things to keep the company alive and so on. So I, I'm working a lot to get the company digitalized and really like uh, the right tools and communication and document management and so on in place that everybody has it really easy and, uh, and structured to work. But we are very far from where I would like the company to get. So, so these kind of tools like to not send emails and stuff but have uh, some software applications which help you with that. We, for example, use Microsoft Teams a lot and so on. Uh, what also helps me here, for example, in this office is the big screens. So I have multiple things on different screens at the same time so I can be very efficient. And in this situation today where we don't have so many, when we don't have any face-to-face -face meetings and everything is online, this is actually a lifesaver. So Apple didn't pay me, but this uh, AirPods that you put in your ear they are saving my life uh, during this time when I have them in my ear pretty much the whole day and my e ears hurt because of them. But uh, I, I actually like it because uh, when I have meetings where I have to share my screen, uh, then you know I have my earpods and uh, share my screen. And uh, sometimes I, I have to uh, look at what people uh, show me. But if I don't have to, uh, if it's just an audio meeting, I walk around, I make, 20 kilometers a day sometimes, and you can see I, I got a little bit of color <laughs> uh, during these past few weeks because I'm walking around while having, while having conference calls. Uh, or um, if I have something really urgent and there is a conference call that I don't have to be 100% uh, involved in all the time, I do something else while I'm muted on my, on my ear, uh, ear pads. So, uh, this is really helping me a lot. Uh, so to multitask, to while you are at the meeting, of course, I mean, you have to pay attention to the topic and to the person, otherwise it's disrespectful to the person. But if there is 20 people in the meeting and it's a topic that you are not super concerned about, I can do some other things. So, and uh, usually we have a lot of uh, travel. So I have to travel every week somewhere for sh uh, within Europe or outside of Europe. And that's not the case right now. So that's actually making me super happy because travel is the biggest time waster. And of course you get things done much better when you talk to people face to face uh, and some things you can't do remotely, but not to travel for the last few weeks is actually making my life much better at the moment. Uh, so yeah, it's basically 
uh, I, somebody also asked me here about if I work out and those kind of things. I don't, I don't have time for it, but uh, maybe it's just laziness. And you know, when you work, when you read all of these mot motivational things about CEOs reading 50 books a year and waking up at five in the morning to have breakfast and to, to work out and to, I don't know, read a book and save the world before eight in the morning. Uh, I don't believe in that. Uh, I feel that my life is chaos. I work from the moment I wake up until I fell uh, until I fall uh, like super exhausted into my bed and I still feel like I didn't get anything done like I make a list of things that I want to get done for that day or for that weekend or whatever and at the end of the weekend I realize I didn't do 10% 20% of that despite not stopping so there's just always so much I want to do and so little time and time is always the problem and time is my biggest issue so effective time management and you know uh, choosing the right things to do is super important but nevertheless there's never enough time so be careful with your time so what do I do when I have free time uh, the problem is I never have because I know that when I'm not working stuff is just piling up and I have so much stuff that I have to get done so when do you have free time basically never but uh, sometimes I just need a break a couple of days during the weekend or, or, or during the summer or whatever um, I then uh, either take a test car like a C2 prototype and drive around that's also kind of work because I try to figure out problems of course I like spending time with my girlfriend and my family sometimes uh, but that's pretty rare and uh, sometimes just you know relaxing and not doing anything so I don't have, uh, I mean, you, when you do something like this, like I'm doing, you don't have time for hobbies and so on. So really like just general stuff. Uh, I like being in the nature, uh, going hiking in the woods, uh, just to get a little bit out of technology and, you know, get your head clear and with fresh air. So that's what I like most, like watch a nice movie, relax, go out, spend a little bit of time with friends and family. And that's pretty much it. I, I never, I think in the last uh, 10 years, I think I never traveled somewhere for, uh, for vacation outside of Croatia. Of course, Croatia is beautiful and has islands and so on, but uh, there is little time to, to do stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's mostly relaxing and being a couch potato when I, when I have the time to relax. I hope you found that video interesting. I believe Mata Rimac is an inspiration for all of you as young adults and that you have real proof that you can follow your dreams and become a success. Here you can pause the video to check over your answers. You should have approximately the same answers as listed here, except for the last question, which is personal. Getting to that personal question, would you like to be an entrepreneur and work for yourself? or have a regular job and get paid monthly? Well, you always have pros and cons to any question like that. Whatever the positives are for a regular job, you've got that many positives for entrepreneurship as well. Whatever you've chosen, whichever you prefer, you'll get a chance to say it, or should I say write it, in the discursive essay. There are four paragraphs, in the first paragraph, you're looking at the introduction. You're making general statements about the topic with a thesis statement. Your thesis statement is pretty much a statement where you're talking about what you're going to be discussing. And there are always two sides. In paragraph two, you need to start with a topic sentence, which pretty much says what you're talking about in this paragraph. And then you have your arguments with backup. The same thing happens in paragraph three. Again, you're starting with a topic sentence and then your arguments with your backup. You want to take about three arguments per side with backup. And then your conclusion, you got a small summary of what you talked about, about one or two sentences there. That's your safest. And then your opinion. I hope you haven't paused the video yet because I wanted to show you some useful phrases that you can use for your essay. The thesis and topic sentence, these are kind of examples more. You don't have to go word for word with this but the connecting and contrasting ideas, as well as the summary and expressing your opinion, you can't really change much about that part. Now you should pause the video and get writing.
I hope you were successful with your essays, and don't forget to send your essay to your teacher so she can go through them. Do you know anyone personally who is an entrepreneur, whether young or old? Do you know what their work hours are like or their work ethic? Is this person financially set? Do they own a small, medium, or large business? And do they have any assistance? These are some things to think about. I had asked you if you knew anyone who is an entrepreneur and now I can tell you that I do. My cousin. He too came from Canada and moved to Croatia, but instead of teaching he decided to open his own business. I'm really proud of him and wanted to show you that there are successes here in Croatia in spite of the hardships or failures. Please pause the video if you need to copy the questions in your notebooks. Be sure to take notes while listening. And if you need to rewind the recording and listen to it one more time, go ahead. Good luck. I moved to Croatia back in August 2015, and shortly after I decided to open a general construction company that specialized in drywall finishing. The process to open a JDOO wasn't very complicated. It's a matter of registering with the courthouse and opening a bank account. You can also speed up the process and simplify the paperwork by having a lawyer register it for you for a fee. The biggest obstacle was creating a reputation and building a base of clients. Once the word is out that you are reliable and do good work, then the work will come to you. Most importantly, you need to have motivation and drive. Your day should begin when the sun rises and do not get ahead of yourself. Be aware of the stage you and your business are in. I truly believe in risk for reward. So if you're thinking of starting your own business, be prepared to make sacrifices. Step out of your comfort zone, challenge yourself, and great things can happen. I hope you enjoyed that and have learned something new. Please check over your answers to see if you've heard and understood correctly. You can pause the video to check and remember that you don't have to have word for word answers as they are here. I would like to just mention the meaning of word of mouth in case you've never come across it. It's when you hear of or even live through a positive or negative experience at some type of business and tell people about it. For example, let's say my cousin came to your house and put up the drywall and everything that goes with it. He does a fantastic job, he's clean and precise, and you're really satisfied with what he's done. You're going to tell people about what an amazing job he did, right? On the other hand, if he had done a sloppy job, didn't adhere to the deadlines, or was just awful, you're also going to tell everyone about him, correct? This is what happens with any service. Tiling, painting, hairdressing, restaurants, the list goes on. That's word of mouth. For the end, I'd like you to make a small list from this chart. Three things I learned, two things I found interesting, and one question I still have. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, and perhaps some of you are thinking of becoming entrepreneurs yourselves. Take care.